Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you guys, you know, coming here. <laughs> and um, we hope you have some tea and coffee and some snacks because otherwise we're gonna have to eat them all. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. been quite controversial issue for the last three, four years, maybe five years now, the council have been changing the rules regarding property licensing. So before you could get a house, find a tenant with the bid. All the forest council have applied for what's called an Article 4 directive. The point of Article 4 is to give everyone a blanket um, planning approval for obtaining a license. So if you had a, a house before 2014, you could apply for a HMO license and you, the license would be granted and that was the end of the story. Uh, all the forest is quite a leafy borough, so they, they weren't sure about bringing licensing in. New York started licensing in the UK, the first borough in the UK, and they kind of all forest waited to see how the response was, and eventually they've started to bring licensing in. Now, since it's been in, um, they've had thousands of applications. I think over 20,000 properties have now been licensed in the Northern Forest. It's a huge number. Our team is, is trained. I mean, we're all uh, going through a professional training program, and we make sure that we, you know, we know what's going on in legislation as it was changed, as we develop our uh, kind of understanding. It's a very kind of you know great area. You have to really decide before you find tenants how you're going to do it, which license you need. And that's why we always advise that get as much information as you can beforehand. Speak to you know, speak to us, and you know, we'll sit down and guide you through the whole process and make sure that when you let the property out, you comply with all the rules. And you can have a headache-free tenancy. The council can make you repay if you don't have a license. Make you repay your rent, the rent to tenants. And the other thing is, if you have a tenant in the property and you don't have a license, you can't send them a Section 21 notice. If they reject the application, how long do you have to change the tenants before you change the tenants? They won't reject your application um, unless, for example, say you're running a HMO and you apply for a selective license. If you can't get planning approval, so you need an article 4 in place in the uh, forest, then you'll have to go to court and meet the tenants and, and get the property vacant. Beautiful evening today. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Very educational. Learned a lot. Learned a lot about HMOs and the importance of being um, following the rules and regulations. If you don't follow them, you could possibly get into a lot of trouble. And you know, it's good to know that you've got all from the states here who are here to help you at every single stage of your application, starting from the beginning till the end. They're going to be here for your support. And the good thing about them is they've got a lot of uh, industry knowledge. They've been in the industry for well over 15 years. So, you know, you've got a wealth of experience and knowledge there, which they're more than happy to share you, share with you. So, um, I'm glad I came today. I have learned a lot. Um, possibly may even look at taking a HMO license with my current property, especially after listening to the beautiful speech by Adnan Karim. Thank you.